Da, 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 da. Okay. Hey, what's up? Hello. So, yeah, people were already talking about that trailer. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it, but Argo gave me kind of a lowdown because he wanted to, He needed to tell somebody something because <laughs> he didn't want to... He didn't know if you'd be wanting to see it, hear about it. Yeah. But... There's a chunky boy, apparently. Yes, that is, um... <laughs> Le, Le Chonk, or as the the Spanish will know him, the Chonk. What did did Game Freak hire some people who who localized for Dragon Quest to get some of these puns? Cause I'm okay with that. I mean, let's be honest. There there, there there's been plenty of times when Pokemon has kind of gone for some choices. Honestly, I'm okay with that. I like. Uh, I like fantastic names. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I keep playing Dragon Quest. Even if some of the puns can be groaner. I'm a sucker for a groaner. So have you seen uh, the end of uh, the Owl House? Well, season two. I have, yes. I anticipated something's happening. I did not expect certain things to happen. You know, if I had a nickel for a, for every time I've seen a Disney show where. The main characters unleash a chaotic deity. I think two nickels. It's not a lot, but it's weird that it happens twice. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it kind of seemed I mean, to be where things were leading up to, but it's like, at the same time seeing it happen, it's like, hmm, this is... Yeah, like, you think, you know, with how he literally throws the thing into the pit, and you're like, okay, we're... We're never gonna see this again. It's like, oh no, no. And, well, Please. that for me, it was Make kind of a, for me, it was kind of an opposite thing of like, oh, he's throwing it into a pit and not outright destroying it or locking it up or something. It's like, oh, oh this is gonna come back to bite him in the ass or just everyone else in and, the cast's ass. And bit he did. It did. I'm so sorry. Should they have a cutesy voice? But I think that's what makes it even more terrifying. Yeah. Like, it really feels like it ties into the whole, um... It's literally a god child. Yeah, like, it, it's almost kind of that thing of, like, the Eldritch Abomination sort of thing where it's like, they are a being of incredible power, and they have the mentality of a child. Yeah, spoiler alert for Gravity Falls, but... Bill Cipher, the most famous villain from there. Basically the same thing, except here's the difference. Bill knows he's evil. He knows he's a shifer. He knows he fucks with people. That means you can reason with him. How do you reason with a kid? Apparently you promised to play with him. Yeah, honestly, I think this one's more dangerous. And that's what scares me. <laughs> Well, I guess it's appropriate. Dana married the guy who voices and made Bill Cipher. <laughs> hmm. But honestly, I can't wait to see what happens next because, goddamn. Yeah, it's like I mean, like I knew there was gonna be those specials and everything. So it's like, okay, we know we're gonna get something out of it, but. Did not expect all that. 
But it's still frustrating because Dan is not going to have the full season to work with it. He's going to have to cut or rush things. Or, ugh. Yeah. It's like... Because the idea is that's going to be like like a few 40-minute things, right? Something like that. Yeah. 30, 40... Well, either 40 to an hour or something like that. Yeah, so it's like... I, the I guess it's going to have to basically be kind of like... A movie in parts. At least that's yeah, kind of that's how I figure it would work. Yeah. Though, I do have a theory as to how they might get back, but... Well, spoiler alert for Amphibia. Which I'm not gonna say. But you've seen it, if you go through Amphibia, you might have an idea of what I'm going. But yeah. Okay. Also, ha, knock him out. Yeah. So, you're gonna go play that new that Kirby in the Crystal after this? I'm considering it. Yeah, because I remember loving that game when I would be able to rent it from Blockbuster. Like, it wasn't a game that I owned, it was a game that I would always rent. I don't think I ever actually was able to beat it, though. That's one I, I was glad to have been able to rent, though. That was one that, um... I... I, I don't think I actually beat it until, like, a long time after I got it, because, like... I think for me, I, it, it did not occur to me that, oh, something special would happen if I got all of the, the shards. Even though yeah. there's that uh, little hint at the ending that, oh, not everything is right. Yeah, I couldn't find all the shards. Because I didn't have enough time. Yeah. And every time I write the game, uh... Apparently this blockbuster was an asshole and would always erase the same. Ah. Uh... Yeah. The one that we usually went to. And I did went to a different rental place. They didn't erase the same, but this blockbuster for some reason would do that. I swear it was on purpose. Like, there was a dickish guy working there who did that on purpose. The fuck with people. Like, it's something I can see that, oh, they don't want the kids to finish the game, so they erase it, but, yeah. It's... Yeah. But kind of half the fun with the, with the old N64 rentals was kind of seeing where somebody's progress was. Maybe it could give you a hint, or maybe some insight. Or maybe a chuckle, like, oh my god, they did not even get to this. Yeah. I know for me, that's probably what gave me some of the, um, probably some of the worst impressions I had for playing some games. I mean, it, it was good for some things, but it was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna rent this Ocarina of Time game to see how it is. Oh hey, there's this save file, it's like, okay, it started up, I'm Adult Link, I'm in the Temple of Time, I go out. Oh, hi, Redeads! Yeah, that happened to me. That that happened. Yeah, pe and people were surprised Majora's Mask was as terrifying as it was. How many time had their moments? The freaking Shadow Temple. Alone, right? Mm hmm God. You know, okay, the Redeads weren't as bad when you're an adult. Like, because like, you're, you're an adult, you're fighting scarier enemies. But it's when you're a kid? And then they're yeah. grabbing you? <laughs> yeah, that kind of makes it worse. Yeah. One of these days, I'm gonna have to go through the crystal shards on my own. Who knows, maybe I might be able to 100% it. Cause, I mean, I'm an adult. I think I 
could figure out how to win the percentage. Because it's a Kirby game, it's not supposed to be that hard. Yeah, it, it's kind of fairly easy to 100% when you know what you're going for. Because, like, I think for me, that was probably the the worst issue. It's just like, okay, what do I... What do I gotta do to make it past this one portion or whatever? What yeah, combo do I need to bring in? Yeah, when you're a kid, you can't really... You don't really think about it. But when you're an adult, you're like, Ah, I know what they're trying to go for. That's how you pull it off. Definitely gonna have. It's definitely one of those games I'm glad that they brought back for modern audience because it's not the best Kirby game, but it's definitely one that a lot of people grew up with N64 have good memories of. Generally, yeah, it's got memory. it's got charm, and it's like I I would say for me it's got my favorite form of the copy system. With how, you know, you got the dual elements and all that. And, like, I know we've had, like, star allies do combo things. And I know that even before Kirby Sharks, they had the partners in, yeah, in yeah. Dreamland 2 and 3 that would do that. But there's something about, like, okay, it's just the elements as what just the Kirby getting them together and doing a thing. And it's like, yeah. sure, not all of the combos were good. But they were but still some... pretty fun. Yeah. My favorite was when I would turn Kirby into a giant Swiss Army knife. Yeah, that was a, a funky but uh, fun one. Yeah. I think that's another reason why I kind of like it. I like the 3D designs of where they went with them. Because they weren't yeah. designs that we would see anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. I think for me... There are like a few favorites, like the, the double electric one where like he would like wave his hands in the air as he's surrounded by uh, an, like a field of electricity was one that was one of my favorites Ooh, visually. Yeah, that was always fun. Yeah. Like, I know it didn't work on some bosses, but, like, it was awesome to at least traverse through, uh, some levels with. And then after... I wanna say, wasn't there one where he turns himself into a curling iron and you could just, like, slide all over the map? Oh, so yeah, like, yeah, curling stone. Yeah. Because I think that was, like, yeah. the, the rock ice one. Yeah, yeah, I did misremember that. I know you could turn himself into a fridge, but, uh, because... Yeah. yeah, that that one was like it, it was that was another one of those weird funky fun ones where it's like okay, it, it, it's so absurd. You turn into a fridge and you hurt enemies with the food you throw out, and you can eat the food to restore your health. Yeah, that also bugs me because in Kirby, food equals health, not pain. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What's up? And I would also say, uh, the, the drill one was one of my favorites, and then, like, of course, the, the exploding ninja stars was, like, the best one in my opinion. Oh, who doesn't? What? Okay, what makes ninjas better? Ones that, ninjas that can blow shit up. What's so this? That was the famous ninja once said, art is an explosion. Oh, we were just talking a bit about copy abilities and Kirby's, uh, uh Crystal Shards. Because, you know, it's now in the, uh, Switch library. It is a giant babby. Yes. Ah, <sighs> so yeah. That new trailer. <laughs> yep. Ah, so, ah. A lot of mechanics are going to be pretty cool. I, I, I'll admit, I was somewhat under underwhelmed. Like, I, I think I kind of wound up watching it because it's like, we have so little information about it, and, like, 
While I don't want to know too much going in, I did want to find some reason to be a little bit hype. Okay, so, uh, some extra information which they share on the, the website. <laughs> um, so, each, uh, each uh, version is going to have a different theme, which they kind of showcase in the trailer. Uh, the theme for Scarlet is the past, the theme for Violet is the future. Okay, that, that makes sense with how, like, the, the one professor dude seemed to have a really futuristic suit and the lady had, a uh, seemed to have kind of a little bit more, I don't want to say tribal, but yeah, yeah that, yeah. that kind of works a little, like, because, like, you know, they got the feathers and it has a bit more of a classical look to her. Yeah, prim I guess primitive caveman sort of look. But yeah. Yeah. Um, they they said on the website that basically um they that you can tackle like it's set up in a way that there is no one path. It is you can take whatever order you want through the game. Awesome. And. Based on the fact that, like, oh, it looks like you're actually students because, you know, everyone's, like, wearing uniforms and they showed, like, these sort of academy emblems. It makes me wonder if the whole idea is that, yeah, you are students, uh, your main progression, I'm going to assume, is some kind of, um, like, oh, you've got, like, these tests. And you going out into the world and learning about Pokemon and then coming back and doing your test. That would be an interesting way. Yeah, I could see that working. It almost feels like going with the open world of Arceus was then beta testing like an open world mainline Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Because, okay, I'm not going to say that Arceus is a spin-off because it's kind of in a gray area of mainline and spin-off games. Yeah. But I feel like they were, like, testing the waters with it to see if yeah. open world was going to sell well. And given, well, let's be honest, Arceus, we didn't expect too much, but it blew people out of the water. Mm. So I'm thinking that's what they're going to try and go for. Try and allow us more choice and open world gameplay. And, and for yeah. me... I kind of like that they are trying to justify more that they actually make two versions. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, let's be honest, like... for a long time, they could have just as easily been like, okay, you play the game, oh, do you want to play the black journey or the white journey or the red or the blue? Like, they could have easily done that and... Yeah. That uh, actually wouldn't have been half bad. Yeah, they, they did sort of test that a bit with the... Uh... Um, the Sword and Shield DLC, since you've got, like, well, I guess Sword and Shield as well, since there was exclusive gym leaders, and then you had the different, uh, rivals in the, um, Isle of Armor. True. But honestly, I am sick and tired of the dual versions. Back when it was the GB, it was the Game Boy Color, it was kind of justified because they wanted people to... Went to go out and trade with each other and talk about the game. Yeah. It was the internet. The, that wild west of the internet. Talking about the game and figuring out where everything was was half the fun. But nowadays, now it's just more annoying. Mm. And usually people with Pokemon will wait will usually wait for the updated re-release third version, right? Which, which kind of they thankfully kind of gotten rid of. Yeah. Exactly. Which I kind of wish they'd done that a little bit sooner with the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon things, but yes. I mean, oh well. That was definitely one of the most unnecessary things. Yeah, yeah, freaking. At, at least Black and White Two actually was a sequel. I I know for a fact that I'm getting Violet based on the legendary design alone. Yes, I I am on Team Purple Jet Dragon. Yes. Uh, so we're and I'm going to call it Valstrax. So we're all going into the future. God damn it. One of us is going to have to go into <laughs> no, the past. No, we, we don't have to go. But yeah. Um, so 
they didn't sh like they also revealed the names of the new Pokemon that they showed in the trailer. Lechonk. Le the, the pig is Lechonk. Yes. <laughs> it's like the, you know be, be, between that kind of name like i mean they, they they've done kind of dumb stupid names before but still like between doing something like lechon for a pokemon name and just like god damn the professors are so sexy it feels yeah. like they are really leaning into like the internet meme side of pokemon yeah I don't know what they do to mimic you yeah um the that that olive looking Pokemon is Smoliv, and that's S M O L I V E, because it's small. <laughs> Which is fantastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I haven't actually looked at the updated names for the starters, but apparently the duck is Quaxley. <laughs> Sounds about right. That sounds like what I would have nicknamed it. <laughs> that or I would call it the Quack, like from Courage the Cowardly Dog. That, that yeah. I I now kind of I, if if when it comes to the anime, I can't help but think of something being called Quacksley having like that that stereotypical posh British accent that. It's yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got the freaking pompadour, so. Yeah. I prefer. I, I still love Bubble Bobble Drago. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna go for him as my starter. Nah, I'm still still going cat cat no, no, best. I, the cat is a close second for me. But I, as a gamer, I like the Bubble Bobble Drago a little bit. <laughs> it's not an, as a gamer thing. It's not. Nothing like a bubble bubble dragon. It's not the bubble bubble. Is it doesn't shoot bubbles. It's fire type. Which is funny because it should shoot fire bubbles or something. It looks like it would. I mean, who knows? Maybe it will shoot bubbles. We've only seen it for a little bit. Plus, it's, it's not. It's not going to be a dragon. I don't care. There, there is no way they're going to give us a starter that becomes a dragon. Obviously not. <laughs> I'm just saying it looks like a little dragon. Or Yoshi. It's like what happened if you cross the bubble bobble dragons with Yoshi. Uh, okay, well, uh, okay, you know what? Counterpoint, Charizard. Not a dragon. Can yeah, Mega Evolve into a dragon? That, yeah, but the point is he has dragon aesthetic. True, and true. Leon, the Dragon Master, did use them. Yeah. And um, I would like to think that he is the authority on dragons. Though, I could imagine them giving us a dragon starter if they had one of them also become fairy type. And then... No, it would have to be fairy. Right, because fire dragon... Well, I think it was like a grass dragon. Um, because I'm trying to think of like the... The three most powerful types are typically Dragon, Fairy, and I guess Psychic, though. Fairy kind of beats Psychic in that regard. Poison. Because it is the I mean, Poison doesn't yeah. really usually, but still, I mean, Poison beats Fairy. Yeah, it'd have to be, no, Steel. Steel. That, that'd probably be the best way to do it. Makes sense. Honestly, I'm not gonna hold my breath for this game, but it is one that's like, well, yeah. I'm not feeling as jaded with Pokemon as I yeah. was before Arceus. Let yeah. me put it that way. Like, I, I have a feeling I will day one this one. Or maybe like we could even do it. Uh, like, if you're gonna do it on stream, we could do it co-op, depending on how that works. That, that, I, I'd be willing to do that. That would be cool. We yeah. Should, we could wait for that because if again they're putting in co-op features that outside of say battling or content. Yeah, like as the trailer shows, it shows the four trainers all uh, joining up and then just walking off in different directions. Yeah, I'm kind of curious how this is going to work. Are we going to be in like instances areas like Monster Hunter kind of thing? Or is it literally we can be in the same game and 
follow the same adventure. So, concurrent. But it's one of those things like, how's the game gonna be done that way? Yeah, that's that's gonna be the biggest thing to look out for. Um, in terms of um, in terms of gameplay style, it's hard to tell. Uh, there is an indication that it could be the PLA style because there is at least that one. There is one moment in the trailer where it shows the trainer uh, crouched down, sneaking up on a Pokemon. Yeah. But everything else looked a bit too static to be the PLA style. Maybe they tried for both. I, I kind of hope maybe that's just a matter of that's how it looked when they did the shot. Yeah, exactly. Who knows what's gonna happen, but, uh... This... Arceus might not just been them, you know, being lucky. They might actually be pulling themselves up. Hmm. Mm. And... It makes me happy to know that, you know, they're doing better while other companies really need to learn better. Square Enix. <laughs> EA. Freaking Ubisoft. <laughs> also, Seth Green, you had a freaking NFT, we're gonna make a show base on it? And then it was stolen so he can't do the show. I, I, at this point, I just don't feel sorry for anyone who tried to invest in NFTs. Yeah. 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 And if just... Also, apparently Gotham Knights isn't doing too well. Go figure. Like, I, I get, I, that was like a Batman spinoff thing, right? Yeah, it's like a yeah. spinoff from, Arca, from the Arkham games. It also doesn't help that they're basically saying, oh yeah, Russia will not be getting it. And I'm like, you know, no Russian language in there. And I'm like, okay, I get not selling to Russia, but no Russian language. You know there are people outside of Russia who speak Russian, right? Yeah, that, it's just... That whole thing's a mess. That just feels petty. Yeah, the, there's just a lot of stupidity, and I'm glad Yang Ye is, uh... keeping tabs on some of this stupidity. And boy, there is a lot in the world, isn't there? Well, it does give me a reason to wake up, because every time I see something stupid happen, it makes me feel a little better, because I know that even if I do something stupid, I won't be as stupid. Another thing I just noticed. Yeah? Hey, unless it's a cutscene. But it does look like you can also have your Pokemon walking with you. I hope and you do that. I, I, cause I just look watchful again, looking for stuff. It's like, yes, it does look like that. There is no, uh, there is no separate battle screen. It does look like it is doing the PLA thing of actually using the environment. Hmm, so that does cool. indicate that it probably is using the PLA system. Let's not, let's and not raise our hopes. I'm gonna get my hopes up. But yeah. it, it yes. would be cool if it is the case. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm with you on that. Because, like, I mean, again, it could be a thing of, like, cutscenes or whatever, but, like, when they showed the thing of, like, oh, yeah, the players split off and do their thing, it's like, ooh, their Pokemon follow after them, and it's like, hopefully that's not just a cutscene thing. Like, man, like, yeah. Yeah, it's... If they can pull this off, they might be able to pull me back into the game. Yeah. Hey, it's good. But yeah, it's five months away. It's too many fucking games this year. 
There are a lot of good ones. I mean, hell, I'm going to be trying to buy all the Nippanichi releases that are coming out this summer. I mean, I have an episode with Makai Kingdom. But, you know, I want to play, like, Love of Tactic. Good for actually a musical adventure. That Sentai one. Maybe I actually play Disguise 6. <laughs> Though I heard Disguise 6 is pretty meh. Apparently they like super streamlined the game so much. They even included like auto battling, so it's almost like an idol game. That, that is the Japanese way though. Yeah, and while I do like idol games, I'm not sure I feel comfortable idling, you know, an RPG like it. I suppose it would make item world dungeon delving a lot easier, or at least less tedious. And even if the gameplay isn't as up to par, even a mediocre Nipponichi story is still entertaining. I just want to see what crazy shenanigans that those characters get up to. through a bit of Kirby right back at you. Yeah. It's still, it's dumb, but it's still fun. I wouldn't say it's a bad show, but yeah, if you don't watch it, you're not missing out much. So, uh, Andrew and I watched the season finale of Our House yesterday, Brad. Yeah, we, we just talked about it, and oh boy. Yeah, I I pointed out I was like, oh, there's that there's a reference to uh Amphibia, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and see that's the uh that's my theory as to how they're gonna get back. Yeah, like I was actually wondering if like this is something that you would know. Is it meant to be a shared universe? Well, the thing is, is that most people are now starting to come to that conclusion because for a while now we have been getting a lot of nods to each other, to a lot of stuff like, oh, like in Amphibia, like when, you know, you'll see like a reference to Bill Cipher and like a statue in the background of an image, and then, but then they get back to the human world, and there's references to some, to other shows like. And, all, and, of course, the Owl House had references to Amphibia, even with pictures and stuff. So I'm starting to think that, yeah, Gravity Falls, Amphibia, and the Owl House do, in fact, share a same universe. Or at least are connected enough dimensionally. So the end of the Owl House confirms, uh, definitely same world. Yeah. And my theory is that, well, how they were able to get back into Amphibia will be the same way they get back into the Isles. Because it seems like the only way they, I could figure out how they can pull that off. Plus, it would make for a cool special. You know, to have Anne and Luz, you know, working together. Oh, can I, can I, can I share just a wild theory guess about a thing that's going to happen for the the future? Go for it. Okay, we're gonna come back, and it's gonna either there's been a time skip or time warp. King will be a full-on type. 
That is gonna be one hell of a grub spurt, let me tell you. <laughs> I... Yeah, that's possible. No, no, I'm with you on that one. I mean, who knows how time exactly is gonna work. And then, of course, you you could always say, oh yeah, there's some bullshittery from the collector doing yeah, something. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, I, I absolutely love that scene where he's just like, he's like, okay, he's looking at the, the thing going on, and it's just like, now to turn it off. Just watch, yeah, right? <laughs> move the moon! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, Bill Cipher was terrifying, but the thing about him is, is he knows he's a god of chaos. He he makes plans, machinations. He, there's a logic to his actions. You can reason with him as hard as it be. How do you reason with a god with the mindset of a five-year-old? <laughs> as, uh, as I was telling you, Bren, you, you promised to play. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, I think the Collector is actually more powerful and dangerous than Bill Cipher. Because Bill <laughs> now, Cipher would at least acknowledge any damages and try not to break everything before he can use it. I don't think the Collector cares. Again, I just love the idea where it's like, uh, send Ruby in to deal with the Collector. Uh, like an hour later, Ruby comes back and like, I'm a god now! Why? I made a bet. <laughs> but, also, how terrifying, you know, where, with Bellows, this is, you know, about to fight it, and it's just one shot, a no-sell against Bellows. Yeah. Mm. God damn. Also, just, it's like, when, when, the the collector finally breaks out and Bellows gets his come up and so it's like, yeah, this bastard deserved it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Also, something you might not have uh, noticed, but remember when he's like, Hunter, wh why are you uh, fighting me? And then he notices the pals man. He, you know what people think he said? Caleb. There's a theory going around that uh, Caleb was actually the name of Bellus's brother, and that was his palace name. And my theory is, is that Hunter is a clone of his brother. Mm -hmm. We know he's a Grimwalker, but we don't know exactly what one is. But what if it's a supposed to be a clone of a dead person? Yeah, that's the reason why the Palestinian grew to him and why he came up with that name of. So, who are you? Uh, uh my name is, uh, uh, Caleb! Yeah, Caleb! Because, yeah, that would explain a few things, wouldn't it? Mm hmm. I did not pick up on all the name stuff myself, so that is a neat connection. Also, apparently, uh, his, uh, his palisman's name is Flatjacks. <laughs> yeah, vaguely recall. <laughs> yeah. Which... is a human invention. I don't know if they have Flatjacks in the aisles. Also, I felt so bad for Kikimora. <laughs> Just like... God, I want to give you a hug of all the bullshit you gotta deal with. Being threatened by Terra, the, you know, the freaking plant lady, to doing your best for your boss who's like, oh yeah, for your final thing, go jump off a, go jump into a pit. I mean, she kind of was a backstabber, though. I know, but it's like, damn, I understand why you did it. Jesus. And it's like, it, it really did show, I mean, like, okay, we do know that, like, ba Bellows thought his plan was set in stone and that he didn't have to give a shit anymore, so, like, you know, when he told Hikikimura, like, you know, piss off, you're not even needed anymore. It's like, Jesus, man, you couldn't have just, like, give her one at a girl to go? Yeah. Yeah. 
What an asshole. Yeah. And honestly, I thought, this might be one of the few Disney villains where they're not going to get redeemed. I... I don't think he, he's not redeemable. Yeah. yeah, he he was absolute trash. Like, yeah, yeah. Is, it's not even uh why he did it. He he actually thinks he's doing the well. He thinks he's doing the right thing, but it's not even uh I understand where you're coming from, but you're wrong about everything. No, he is so dead set in his ways. Yeah, he oh, like that bit. Like the bit from Star Wars: The Forces of Evil. But he he was just flat out psychotic. Like, I want to say, oh, maybe he became that way after being trapped there the entire time. But you know what? I know. I, I honestly get the feeling he was always that way. I mean, given the theory that his brother, the hunter, is a clone of his brother, and given what we saw of him basically. Starting a cult and training people. I think he basically threw his brother's life down to use it for his own purposes. Because he fucking uses people. I would, I would not be surprised. Like, I mean, okay, he seems to have some affection for his brother, but at the same time. That just kind of feels like he's broken inside and he needs something to justify himself. Exactly. It's the end of justify the means. Yeah. I mean, remember, even before he became Bellows, he was willing to let Luz die yeah. for his own yeah. And that was before he knew Luz. Like, there... Oh, no. Like, I, I would... I'm, I'm not gonna give him too much credit, but it's like... I could see something to the idea of like, okay, he sees all these people as demons, and so that justifies his cruelty or whatever. Maybe I can get that, especially with the idea that, oh, he's he's just from such a different time that he can't empathize like that. But at the same time, like, he's just an awful person. Oh, God. But, yeah. Also, Argo. Well, if I had a nickel for every time I've seen a Disney show where a main character has unleashed a chaotic evil upon the world, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, <laughs> but it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, okay, in this case, it's appropriate because Dana did marry Alex Hirsch, who made Bill Cipher, so... Few odd parallels there. Honestly, I can't wait to see what happens next. I think uh, the build's gonna be worth it. I I, I, mean, I kind of. Oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, I kind of want to see some slice of life of the the kids getting used to living in the human world but because of how much of a time crunch they have to run on i have a feeling there won't be much of that yeah suck. that was season three of amphibia hmm because after season two they make it to earth but they still need to get back to amphibia for something and yeah a lot of season three was slice of life with the planters dealing with human life hmm. And it was fun! It was really fun! And that kind of shit would be fun! Cause yeah. really... Go ahead. No, and I mean, it really sucks for Dana, because it's clear she's very, she's very passionate about this project, and there's a lot she wanted to explore. Yeah. Cause part of it for me is that it's like, when it comes to the whole time thing, it's like, Obviously, they're going to want to have to do the whole thing of, okay, they go back to the Boiling Isles or whatever is left of it to save people. But if there's yeah. just the fact that it's like, oh, we've... There's so much potential for all the things because it's like, Gus was the, the number one human club person. And you have the whole thing with Hunter having the potential of being like, what is this place I was, you know my extended family came from all these other people who can't do magic. Yeah, and then, again, also, then dealing with the fact that, oh, 
we can't use our magic. And then they have to learn. They would have to learn how to use flip spell. Also, there is something I wish I would love to see. I would love to see an interaction between Lucy's mom and Amity's mom, where it's like they're having tea, and Lucy's mom is like, "So, my daughter told me that you uh, had an altercation," and Amity's mom is like, I, "Well, you see about that," and then Lucy's mom just slow puts her purse on the on the table and slowly pulls out the slipper. <laughs> Because, god damn it, that bitch deserves it. <laughs> it's like, I can excuse genocide, but I cannot excuse you dating my daughter. It's like, you can't excuse me dating? You can excuse genocide? <laughs> what a bitch. So, oddly enough, not homophobic. I honestly thought they were gonna go that route. Uh, I mean, they, they doesn't seem to be an issue on the Boiling Isles. Yeah, I ought- though, that was just more of a- I honestly thought they were gonna go that far to make her even more of a hate sink. Like, I'm glad they didn't go that far for a cheap way to make somebody hate her. So it's like a wrestler, basically, and a local thing, basically assaulting the local team. Yeah, it makes them, them the bad guy, but it's like a cheap tactic, right? I mean, in that context, I would think so. Yeah. Um, also, so if I had a, uh, if I had a nickel for every Disney show that I've seen where a main character loses their limit in the, in the finale, in the finale arc. Yeah, somebody loses a limb in an amphibia. It's, it's, it's happening twice all over a lot of people. It, Damn it, Rain. I don't kind of know what the hell Rain's connected to the Collector was, because the way- Oh, that Rain. <laughs> I mean, you have to look Rain. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was kind of zoning out a bit. So, I heard, God damn it, Rain, and I thought you were actually talking about, you know- No, no, no. Rain as in, you know. Yeah. Well, by the way, I love the fact that they're a shy person, and they're the head of the Bard College. The one place like, where you're gonna have to be out in public. That is, uh, that is funny. I mean, he, he does seem to be a fairly smooth dude when he's not dealing with, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Non binary. Oh. Did not yeah. pick up on that. So, yeah. In other countries, they are classified as male because of that whole thing, but it is it's a pronoun. Like, okay. uh, oh, right, I think it's, I think the indication is supposed to be the earring, right? A little bit, and and, the, and their voice is kind of a little bit on the androgynous side, so. Actually, yeah, non-binary, non-binary voice actor for. Um, yeah. Nice. Honestly, you know, I'm just. I'm pretty much just neutral with the whole thing. If they want to, if somebody wants to call themselves non-binary, eh, whatever. I'll use their pronouns if it's just they. I'm not gonna go completely out of my way if it's like crazy pronouns kind of deal. Simple days. Uh, yeah. yeah. I like him as a character, and I. Also, I like how the Abomination, uh, and it, it's this, like, grim and proper version when the Abomination is one of the most filthy things. <laughs> There's something hilarious about that. Yeah. The, I, I love the, uh, not sure what gender, the little, the little dude that is the Animal Coven. Leader. I don't know who that is. I'm just thinking it reminds me of 
reminds me of the werewolf character from that Scooby-Doo in the Grateful. That's just what I'm remembering, but you know what? I'm gonna look that up. I don't know what gender that is. They sexually identify as a cat. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, I might as well. And Tara, the plant head, come in. Oh, God, she is terrifying. Yeah, mm -hmm. as I mentioned to Andrew, I'm like, I like the fact that normally when you think of uh, people that associate with plants, they usually are very nice, wholesome. They're just like, yeah. And yeah. Like, she looks like the total package of the sweet old grandmother who could probably kick your ass if she knows a lot of things. Yeah. Well, she definitely has that. It turns out she's as venomous as some of the plants that she probably keeps as a uh, house company. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think she's more bloodthirsty than Bellows. The only reason why she can't do any of this stuff is because, oh, somebody told her about the laws. If she did, nobody told her about the laws. Those kids would be dead. And looking at that. Hmm. So the beast head coven is named Eberwolf, and uh, yeah, I'm not saying a gender, it's just they. Because they, 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 they identify as wild beast. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, if it helps that uh, their actress is Kari Walgren. A woman, so I guess yeah. I mean, if we've we've seen plenty of times where voice actor doesn't match up with the gender of their. Uh, yeah, I character. know, but that's about as close as we could go. Three, 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 three. I guess it doesn't really matter because apparently in the idols, eh, you can be you can be whatever gender or sexuality you want. Cause that's yeah. Kind of thing is, eh, whatever. I'm glad they don't make a big deal about everything. Unlike, say, you know, High Guardian Spice that makes a total deal about it, even though in a world of magic where you have this sort of thing, it probably wouldn't be a deal, right? Yeah, that's just not very good storytelling. It's just one of those things that pairing the world and the writing, how one is better than the other. Uh, yeah. Oh, either way. A hint of subtlety is all I ask. Well, that in good animation. <laughs> and boy, the Owl House has that in space. <sighs> but yeah, you'll like Amphibia. They definitely do well with the animation stuff. Like, they pull out the stops. Uh, as for other shows, well, let's see, I watched Invincible, uh, Inside Job on Netflix is pretty good, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good comedy, it has some, uh, it has some writers from, uh, Gravity Falls and Bojack Horseman on it. <laughs> I've just been, um, so, oh uh, yes, uh, Shara, Fox, and I last night we started season two of uh, Kobayashi. <laughs> How How's was that going? I mean, you, you know, you, you and I have obviously watched it before, but like, god damn, it's it's funny just seeing, like, listening to the others since they haven't seen it before. So like. Uh, when they're like trying to theorize about like uh Ilulu. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm just like I'm not gonna say anything, but <laughs> I'll I'll leave the the fun stuff she does to to for you to experience. 
Like the, when she tries to make hands for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this mini game you wanna come up with for your game? What? I just kind of, uh, I just, I just put it in my, in the chat for, um, Vault of Heaven. Um, I kind of had the idea of just having, like, these, like, collectible cards or collectible figurines that, um, you could use them, at, like, they, they actually have, like, special abilities that you could potentially use, but at the same time, uh, they can be used for, like, a little mini game that you can play, uh, in, like, you know, in downtime or whatever. Yeah, I can see Scrap totally collecting them. I mean, he can't, he doesn't really sleep, he's got nothing better to do, but he can come up with strategies. So what you're saying is we would be playing Triple Triad. Basically, that's <laughs> literally the example I gave. A Triple Triad, Dual Monsters-esque thing kind like, of deal. Like, obviously it's gonna be simple enough that it can be just something that can be done in like, you know, five, ten minutes. That 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 would be ideal, yeah. Cause like that that would to me be the the biggest worry is like, okay, how much time is this gonna take up? Yeah, yeah. that is a big problem. Like, I love triple try it. I know how much time. Oh, there's a a fun let's play I've been watching uh, by Samuel Streamer. Funny Fallout New Vegas, where he's playing a, a dumb alcoholic melee guy by the name of Grigner. It's been pretty crazy. <laughs> Especially since he's been making his uh, followers barbarians, so he's got his brother, uh, as he was his baby brother Boonbarian, who he even edited the side so he's like really small. <laughs> Funny. It just goes to show that Fallout New Vegas is still good at all new games. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if you've heard the news. Uh, I might have mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when it actually happened, but um, uh. Uh, what's, what was it called again? The... What was Bethesda's sci-fi RPG game called? Starfield? Starfield. Yeah, Starfield's being pushed back. Uh, it, it's next why. year. Yeah. Honestly, I, I don't even care. May, maybe they finally realized. Maybe we should actually, like, polish the game a bit before release. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of stopped caring about him. I mean, after 76, I don't trust him. I mean, that's kind of part of the whole 70... deal of it is... That, like, I mean, I, I know they eventually got 76 up to snuff. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like... How, how many times do we gotta do that where we have to actually wait for a game to get good? That is yeah. not and, acceptable. And the thing is, so it's like... you. I would say you can't judge the rest of their performance based solely on one game that they made to chase a trend. Well, the when thing is... That else... go, go ahead. It flips about the I game say... the trends that... Yeah. And... They... They have... They got... They realized the mistake they made with that, and that's why... Um... It's like, yeah, sure, they've always released buggy games, but their games are usually big and complex, so that's... It's hard to squash. Um... But when we're starting to get great open world of big games, like stuff like, you know, Pokemon like Arceus, Elden Ring, and other that, stuff... That, no, like I wouldn't... Don't... I'd say... PLA does not... It's... It's a smaller scope than most open world games. And, and it does have some of its issues, but like, I, I would say it's a combination for me, like, it's a things of like... Yes, the, some of their, their, their previous open world stuff has been, um... Slightly buggy, but it was bearable. For the most part. Yeah. 
but then there's also been kind of the thing of like there's been like a whole bunch of high profile games where they've done this thing of release it in a bad mess and patch it up eventually and people are kind of tired of that yeah i i understand that definitely i i think that is just one of the uh unfortunate circumstances when it comes to open world games that is kind of have to be accepted is that there is no open world game <sighs> then again I'm, I'm gonna exclude Nintendo from that with Breath of the Wild because I mean Nintendo is Nintendo and they well, probably I mean you could say okay they got more of a thing to worry about because they gotta sell a system as well but at the same time that's yeah. kind of a thing of why don't we hold other people up to that standard yes. where it's like... Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. It's like... I can I can see it from both sides. Because, yes, complex open world games are going to be buggy as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo does it, no, does it fine, so... Yeah. It's like, for me, though, it's also a thing of like... Like, when it came to, uh, Cyberpunk, and there was the whole thing of, like, well, the PC and the next-gen releases were the most stable versions, but the ones for Xbox One and PS4 were not so much. And it's like, to me, that's like, okay, it's one thing if, like, the graphics are not as good or the frame rate is not as good, but, you know, they still run decently. But then there's the whole thing of, like, okay, the game just doesn't work. Like, or there's save file corruption and things like that, where it's like, you guys have been able to work with this standardized piece of hardware for a while, why couldn't you make it work? Yeah. And an another good example of, uh, where I realize that my defense falls apart is uh, one of my favorite um, RPGs. Uh, it's called Outwood. It's an open world RPG with co-op. Um, it's made by a smaller studio. It's janky, but it works. Like the jank is that sort of charming jank where it's like, whereas instead of, oh God, the whole thing is flying around. The whole body is flying around now. I can't do the quest anymore. Like, one one of the funniest jank jank parts is like so the um co-op partner uh if you like say the host go like you've you've gone through a zone and you've killed a bunch of enemies and then you sort of reload back into that zone uh all the bodies will be a posing for the co-op companion until you sort of get closer. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's... That, that is silly funny. Yeah. Also, I had to remember what an A pose is, because everybody... I mean, everybody... May, I mean, I, I should say T pose. Like, yeah, T pose, not A pose. But there is actually a difference between yeah. A and A pose. The A pose is where the arms are more down the side, yeah. Exactly, yeah. But T posing is more memeable. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, just like it's it's a very quality game. It's not it doesn't have the AAA polish, but it is a very charming game. Difficult, but yeah. Sometimes that's all you really need. I mean, hey, remember Undertale? That was an indie game, and it trumps even plenty of triple A games of its time. So... I mean, it helps that Undertale kind of stays within its scope. It doesn't try to be a big triple A game. Yeah. Whereas it kind of feels like... You, you get the feeling a lot of, like... Or maybe not a lot, but there, there's a fair number of triple A games that feel like... They go for the triple A look and aesthetic and feel for some things because it feels like they're supposed to. It's like, all right, yeah. we gotta make a big multi-million dollar blockbuster. Yeah. 
I think I'm starting to see why some people don't like this level. What What are you having? Like, is it the... It, it, it's the, the whole verticality? getting knocked down repeatedly yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, I... I fully accept that, but at the same time, I'm like, I... It's, I love the level just because of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, like, the whole season changing yeah. thing is really neat. I will not yeah. deny that. It's just, man, it feels like it could afford to be a bit less punishing. Yeah. Well, this is also reminding me, like, I think at some point, I'm I'm going to have to, like, do a playthrough of the Oracle games, the, the Zelda Oracle games. Yeah. Just because, like, it seems like it'd be really cool to play all the way through all those. Like, I know they were pretty good, decent games. And... Dragonfly. But yeah, like I, I, I at one point in the foolishness of my youth, I decided to go. I, I went through and I beat Oracle of Ages, but I did it with a game shark, and I feel like I cheated myself. Yeah. As much as I complain about the verticality, I suppose that it is kind of a thing of the times of like, that's kind of almost what you expect out of a early final 3D level. platformer. Well, also, I mean, yeah, a, a, you know, final level, but like, it makes me think a little bit about how, um, in Mario 64, some of the final levels did have this extra emphasis on verticality and how, um, like, you know, it could be so frustrating if you get up to the height of, like, the, uh, the clock level or the, the rainbow ride level. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if you get knocked down, it's like, well, I guess I'm climbing all the way back up again. Well, guess I'll go fuck myself, then. Honestly, yeah. though, this is why people don't like this level. The whole gimmick of season change, no, that is pretty cool. Like, especially for the time. That's impressive for the N64. I think the big thing, uh, like, thinking about it, though, it's like, last time I played through, um, uh, Super Mario 64, which was about 10 years ago. <laughs> I do remember just absolutely, like, I realized I had enough stars to skip, um, uh, the frickin' clock world, I can't even remember its name. So I'm just like, yep, I'm doing that, I don't want to do that <laughs> world. I think I might have also done that with, uh, when I had the DS version. Well, I also remember playing a lot of the, uh, the gambling mini-games. Yeah. 
But if I if I had to choose a world to skip in Banjo Kazooie, I would definitely skip Rusty Bucket Bay over Click Clock Woods any day. Yeah, Rusty Bucket Bay doesn't feel as fun. This one feels more like final level material. Yeah. And the escalation, because it definitely feels like it's testing a lot of your stuff. Yeah, but like... Rusty Bucket Bay is frustrating. Yeah, because for me, I would say it's kind of a thing of like, um... As frustrating as it is dealing with getting knocked down from high heights over and over again... Rusty Bucket Bay felt like it was almost obsessed with restricting your movement. Yeah. Between, like, okay, you lose air no matter how you swim. Uh, there was, like, so few... It felt like there were so few flat spaces to go on. There was going in and dealing with all the moving gears in the engine room. Oh, God, I fell down. Yeah, but, yeah. It... And it's like, okay, if you wanted to move between some sections, you had to walk almost like tiptoe along some of these sections where you had to pay eggs to move along. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, as much as I don't like this level, but that's mostly because the verticality can be frustrating with controls. This feels like a better level. Yeah. It's like, I think I think it's also kind of a matter of what area you can go around. With Rusty Bucket Bay, it's pretty much, you can either go forward onto the ship, or you can kind of try to do a bit of a circuit around the edge of the level. This one is like, oh, it's a nice big open place. You can go between different versions of the place. It's... You could fly around as the bee. Which is pretty cool. It's, you know how cool that bee is? It's so cool it came back and banjoed. And we lost Brad. Rip Brad. Yeah. Hello? Hey. What? You know how cool that bee was? Yeah. He, he... How cool was it? You, you're, you're gonna say Banjo Tooie, right? Yeah. Okay. Why? Do, do I keep breaking out every time? It, I say it, it, no, that's the weird thing. It immediately stops after you say Banjo. Yeah. What the fuck? I, I was almost expecting you to say Banjo 3E, even though I know that's not a thing. I wish it was a thing. I mean, technically it is. No, it's not. It wasn't officially called 3. I know, but technically, it is the third Banjo-Kazooie game. Not oh. actually, because there was a Game Boy game. Well, y you know what I mean. Uh, you know, the so other I'm one. actually me. <laughs> um, actually... Oh my god. <laughs> Imagine if, just to frick around with people, they made a proper Banjo platformer and they called it banjo 4 -y. Just yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, just the... Oh my god, yes. Oh god, I'm almost imagining it also being a case of they just they, they almost go for the meme of it and they call it Banjo Fori, the search for Banjo 3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh just like King's Quest 7, King's Quest 8, the quest for more Jalo. <laughs> I actually rewatched Game Grumps, uh, well, Steam Train, some of their Sierra games. Oh, yeah, they did do I a bunch of those. I can't believe how old those Let's Plays are. Like, freaking eight years ago. There's Game the Grumps is old. That's not shut up. <laughs> uh... Uh. Ooh, I know the secret. Yeah. 
because of this one stupid thing that Rusty Bucket Bay put into my head, it's that you can smash windows. Uh. I guess there, there's also the Bad Monster Mansion, but that... this For, yeah. for especially that circular style of windows. say this when it comes to the music of this level i i'm enjoying all the wildlife being like part of the instrumentals yeah to see what would happen if Microsoft actually decided to be like, hey, we've got we've got this banjo kazooie property, let's do something with it. Or maybe even partner up with Nintendo and be like, we'll own the rights to banjo, but we'll we'll let you work on one. Yeah, like oh like Microsoft actually developing games for Nintendo, like, exclusive Nintendo, that would be kind of cool. Hmm. Sh showing that Microsoft is not, like, they have been really doing this thing lately of like, yeah, you know what, uh, we aren't going to, like, we're still going to have our first party, but, you know what, let's actually make a community out of this. Again, freaking um, a bunch of Xbox exclusives are on Nintendo already. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think you got to remember it's they 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 jump out, they pop out once, go in, then pop out and do a two yeah. a two bite. Yeah, the, the the issue was that I tried to do a double jump and then do a, a peck, which yeah. is not a thing, I guess. Yeah, because you you got Kazooie for your double jump. It's Yeah, like what, what is on what uh, Xbox games are on the Switch? You've got um, Cuphead. You've got um, Aura in the Blind Forest. Ori. Yeah. Wasn't there another one? I feel like there should be one more. I mean, I guess technically this. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Banjo is technically a Microsoft property now. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, the fact that Microsoft did allow basically Nintendo not only Banjo Kazooie and Smash, but also allow this game to be on the Switch, does mm. say to me that at least the relationship is cordial. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like even with um. Actually, I think it was Sony. Like, Sony is the one that is, like, they're trying to be like, oh, there's, we're not going to do crossplay, but at least Sony was like, uh, yeah, look, um, we're going to still let, um, uh, what is it, frickin' Destiny to be multi-platform. But do, do they own that? They bought, they bought, um, uh, What's it they call it? Bungie? Yeah, they bought Bungie, yeah. Okay. I, I thought Bungie just became their own thing, but yeah, I guess that makes sense that they would get uh, bought out. And yeah, so it's like, just like, uh, both, like, uh, though I guess that thing was, um, because when Activision was, uh, brought, bought, um, Xbox did, or yeah, Microsoft did say, yes, we're still gonna release, like, uh, Call of Duty multi-platform, we're gonna keep those, uh, agreements. So, it kind of is just like, yeah, we own Bungie now, but, you know, since you said you're gonna keep Call of Duty multi-platform, we'll keep Destiny multi-platform. <laughs> I'm just accepting it by this point. The, the... Uh, yeah, you, I think the best thing to do is you really need to, like, take things a little bit more slowly. Which is difficult because I just want to get it done, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also embrace the beak. Yes. <laughs> they do make that sound. Come at me, you. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it is nice to see that, you know, freaking manufacturers and developers and whatnot can come to the realization, you know what, if we're just kind of pricks, that doesn't really benefit us all. I mean, Sony's still kind of being pricks, but... <laughs> yeah. Like, it's still really stupid that, um... The, uh... Uh... Um, so with, like, the whole PlayStation Pro thing, uh, a good chunk of it is unaccessible to Australians. Wow. Because it's like, yep. yeah, I think, I think it is, um, their, uh, streaming service is, yeah, not available in Australia. So it's like, oh yes, Australians have to pay the same price as everyone else and get access to half the features. Technically, you're paying more because the tax and yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is just a bunch of bullshit. I agree. It is complete and utter bullshit. I guess you could say it also grinds my gears. Yes. Wasn't that a, a James Rolfe thing? No, that was Peter Griffin, but there is a guy on YouTube who does live-action Peter Griffin. He, like, he cosplays as him and he does the grind my gears for him. He didn't what? recently about rising gas prices, and he actually said some pretty funny jokes with that. Including... Uh I would have to steal a Tesla. Actually, if you stole a Tesla, would it become an Edison? 
Alright, Okay, was the James Roll thing, you know, it's bullshit, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what's bullshit? It's one of those things you just... Because I thought I looked up here during another season, but... Any new things could be there, just... Make sure. Okay, yeah, nah. Because I know that, like, I think it was during... The spring when I first got up here I saw a trophy, but... Yeah. Yeah, let's check out winter. Almost did a perfect dive. I know it's supposed to be like Geronimo he's saying, but it always sounded like he said Jumbo. All I heard was yelling, man. I'll have to pay attention next time I throw myself off a cliff. <laughs> hey, Bran. Yeah? Remind me, uh, in Tui, you actually had, like, hints for the, uh, the Jiggies, right? Uh... I don't remember, actually. I actually can't remember at the top of my head. Yeah, you know, one of these days, I might have to uh, try and replay uh, DK64. I remember when I first played it, I did get to the end, but like, I think I missed a bunch of stuff, so like, the time limit to fight. K rule was extremely short, and I kept on failing. Like, you, you're supposed to do some other stuff to extend the time limit, if I recall. Probably collect stuff? Probably. That's what that game wants you to do in spades. I know there, like, I, I, I do also recall there's a thing about, um,. You could play, like, the original arcade version of Donkey Kong and one rare game to get special tokens, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that just makes me think of, um, there was a... There was a game where you could go into, like, an arcade and play, um... Time Splitters, and it turned out that the entirety of Time Splitters was hidden on the game. No oh, way. wow. Yeah. Did I just hear motherfucking Snowman? So you have chosen death. Yeah, that's right. So it was a uh, home front. The entirety of uh, Time Splitters 2 was hidden in Homefront. No way! That shitty Red Dawn knockoff has the entire yeah. Time Splitters 2 in there. Wow! My revenge is set aside. But yeah, like, that is, like, super cool when you get a whole game inside another game. <laughs> like, I know there was that Panzer Dragoon, uh, get, you know, like, remake, and then it had, like, the original first game in it. No? 
Uh, uh, pa Panzer Dragoon Orta did have the original game in it. That's what I was thinking of. Orta. My brain. I couldn't remember everything, yeah. Yeah, it was like if you played it long enough, I think you would uh, unlock the thing. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. Here's the thing. It wasn't just a. Uh, it wasn't just Time Slitters 2. It was a 4K port of it. Oh, damn. Hmm. And it was only discovered last year. What? One of the developers hinted at it. Uh... Yeah, so it was like, basically, uh... Like a developer essentially says like, Yeah, they, they, we did put a... Like, we put Time Splitters 2 4K port in Homefront The Revolution. Uh... But we forgot what the code was. So, wow. basically, people then pulled the game apart to find the code. I mean, because the, there was no reason to pull the game apart at all because it was a pretty mediocre game. Yeah. In fact, one of the... One of the I mean, the only thing that was really great about... Most well known about it was the short campaign and the fact that it was banned in South Korea because of its depiction of a unified Korea under Northern. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, THQ releasing 10,000 balloons here in San Francisco that pissed off the local environment list after, you know, the balloons came down into the bay. Yeah. Oh my god, imagine just doing that straight up as like a marketing thing where it's like, okay, we've released this uh, shitty little, uh, you know, mediocre, you know, licensed game, whatever type thing. Oh, it turns out it has a cult classic hidden on it that hasn't seen the light of day for, like, two generations of game consoles. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's one way to do it. It's like, okay, we got this boring-ass shooter. Da -da -da. Oh, it actually has the original N64 GoldenEye on it. Yeah, don't <laughs> ask us how we got the rights for it, but we did. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, the rights of the original Goldeneye, now there's... You have to go through three different oops just to get that. Now I'm trying to think about, like, what would be, like, one of those games that everyone just wants to be, like, re-released or remade? And, like, we will exclude Goldeneye because of that just being a rights nightmare. Yeah. Uh -oh. I mean, that could be, you know, Panzer Dragoon Saga. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have put my... If, if I'd be adding to my, uh, to, you know, the spirit bomb of wishes, yeah, I'd be putting my name in that. Yeah, I know what yours would be, bro. I would love to see a You port. want Skies of Arcadia. No, no. I mean, I would like a port of it, but I would also like a port of Mischief Maker. You know what? Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I... It wasn't the best platformer, but it was definitely one of the most... It was very unique. Yeah, it's what? like... It's like Dragoon Saga. It's not the best, but it is so unique. You know, more people need to play it. Yeah, like, that's another one I hope eventually, like... If they don't just straight up make, like, a retail port of it, that hopefully they bring that on to the, uh, the, the, this service. The Bomberman We're... 64 games were pretty fun. We've discussed this before, but it still surprises me to this day that there was never a Mischief Makers game for the Wii. Yeah! Holy shit, yeah, because the shake! Yeah. Uh -huh. And you think with how Treasure deigned yeah. to make a sequel to Sin and Punishment, they could have also done that for uh, Mischief Makers. I mean, yeah. I mean, okay, Mischief Makers was published by Enix, so that there's also somewhat of a rights thing. But I mean, fuck, Square's not doing anything with Mischief Makers. Yeah. The the closest thing we got was Wario Shake. 
Yeah. Yeah. Is that even what it's called? Yeah, Warrior Land Shake It. Or, or I yeah. think in Europe it was called yeah. Shake Dimension or something. Yeah. I mean, obviously I want Skies of Arcadia, but there are plenty of other games that more people need to play. I'm trying to think, like, what are some other games that, like... How about oh, I know. Games? I can't speak on them? Um... They're pretty good RPGs, especially apparently Suikoden in 2. Oh. I, I, I know. It's an RPG that fucking no one can get these days because it's so expensive. It's also not Panzer Dragoon Saga, but I won't hold it against it. Um, Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door. Yes. Oh, if we can't get yes. Panzer Dragoon, that's a close second. Yeah, you know, like, I like uh, that we at least have the original Paper Mario available through this service, but it's like, people talk so much about Thousand Year Door. Thousand Year Door is the best. Actually, here's the thing. Skies of Arcadia is really good, but I understand why we're not getting a port of it, because apparently the licensing issue is all over the place. I don't know what Thousand Year Door's issue is. Because Nintendo... Nintendo doesn't like Paper Mario. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like Pixar who hates Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. It's weird. Except, you know, Pixar is m releasing a Buzz Lightyear movie. No, no. They, they, they hated the animated series. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is weird having... I know, right? And that's the reason why we're not- it's not on Disney Plus! Oh my god. That pisses me off because I like that- I like that show. It has some of the coolest villains! Yeah. Oh, another game. I, I mean, I guess this is also turning into what franchise do we want Nintendo or whoever else to, to revive? Um, F-Zero GX. Ah. <laughs> uh... Oh, you poor, poor man. Because uh, you're like, man, imagine if, like, they say, okay, Mario Kart 8 DLC, we're just going to give you F-Zero GX with it. Why the fuck not? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, buddy, um... Uh, what was it? Um, because it's like, I think it's called Red Out, which is kind of like a company made a game that is basically F Zero because Nintendo wasn't making it. It's, yeah, it's called Red Out, I believe. And the newest one just came, like the second one just came out, or is coming out like this month. I'll, I'll have to give that. I think I vaguely remember seeing that on shelves, but. And I used to remember what, uh, Sony used to have their version of F-Zero, which was, uh, was it Wipeout? Something Wipeout, like yeah. I don't think that's actually technically, like, okay. I might be a little bit confused, because I know there was a version of Wipeout for the Nintendo 64. Right. Yeah, I just, I just remember playing it on, um, uh, I had it on a demo disc. So I think I just associate it with, um... Like, they, they do Sony. seem to mostly be on, like, Sony platforms, so that may be why. It's like, it, it's kind of how, like, um... Spyro and Crash are technically not Sony characters, but because that's the thing they were on, that's what you associate them with the most. Yeah. Hmm. I wouldn't mind. Okay. I would love to see a proper port of pers of both per Persona 2 games. Because <laughs> Persona 1 
is very janky, but Persona 2, both of them are actually a lot more stable and fun. The problem is, it's trying to actually play them. Problem is, it's like, it really does feel like, um, it's like, ever since Persona 3, it's like, yes, Persona 3 Onward is basically it's its own just... setting. Yeah. like Persona 1 and Persona 2 is like, oh yes, this is uh, Shin Megami Tensai, but with a slightly different uh, uh, gameplay to it. Not even different gameplay, just, wow. yeah, instead of, instead of, you know, befriending the monsters or the demons, you just... Yeah, well, spin off to Shin Megami If, which, yeah. That's a whole new can of worms right there. And like, from what I understand, it's even a thing where there is a bit of resentment within the Shin Megami Tensei fan base when it comes to Persona. Yeah. Because when... it's kind of overcome it. Oh, oh, yeah. Over... <laughs> it did more than overshadow it. It basically redefined. Yeah. Shin... Hmm. Because. At least with the original Persona, it still had a lot of the themes of the original Shin Megami. But then Persona 3 came and, well... We're in a whole new direction. And, but if I'm being honest, I don't hold any resentment to Persona. If anything, Persona kind of saved Shin Megami because... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, with the popularity of Shin Megami 3, 4, and 5, well, we might not have gotten Persona 5, or Shin Megami 5. Yeah, I, I, I've kind of had some similar feelings with, um, the various uh, Xeno games. Where it's like, I, I am glad that Xenoblade has been as successful as it is. It's like, it's a, sa it's a shame Xenogears was just a one-off and that Xenosaga didn't get to fulfill its whole thing. But I'm glad, you know, Xenoblade has at least had some success. But, holy fuck, can we get a sequel to Xenoblade X, please? Thank you. Yes. Because <laughs> that, again, I, I, I say it every time. That cliffhanger ending. Yeah, like that, that's kind of some of the worst of it. Like, I don't think I would mind some of the the main games just having sequels, except that it's like Xenoblade One had a very satisfying ending. It's like, you know what? Yeah, there could be more to this, but we've had a very satisfying arc. And then we had two come along, and it's like, okay, again. It, it was like, it ended on a very satisfying note. I'm glad we went on this journey. It was fun. It's like, everything feels like it's wrapped up. There could be more, but it was okay. Xenoblade X, you know, yeah, it was, it's a good game. I had a lot of fun with it, but then it's like, there, there's a whole lot more you could find out because, you know, there's just like, oh, there's all these side quests. It's this wonderful big world to explore. And like, I think that would have been fine enough of just, oh yeah, it's this world where there's a lot going on but, and there's more that could be there, but at least the note of the story ended on a satisfying note. But no, they just HAD to put in that little bit of a stinger at the end. Yeah. Uh, and never follow up on it because... Argyle, do you remember when Xenoblade X came out? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, 2013 or 14. Okay, it was 15, but t t still, okay. point is, yeah, that's, that's been a good seven years. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah. even... Even if they just did like a, uh, like a port to the Switch and then have like, and we're adding some extra content to finalize the story. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how 
with the port of uh, Chrono Trigger DS, how they added a new ending that linked it better to Chrono Cross. Yeah. And I know that one, like, I mean, fuck. In, in the Xenoblade Definitive Edition, the, the, the definitive version of the first game, it's like, okay, we remade the first game, and we even included a little extra thing with that uh, Futures Connected stuff. What I really like just how customizable... Uh, the the character was yeah like between just the you mean there's the actual character itself but you could also fashion up their you know their their their, their armor outfit whatever yeah like I really do wonder if maybe it was like a sales thing that caused them to not continue it. That would be my suspicion, but it's like at the same time, it's like, guys, you put it on the Wii U. <laughs> and, and it's like, so many games have gotten an excellent second chance by getting ported to the Switch, and it's like, man. Like, they wouldn't even need to do a, a, a graphical update like they did with Xenoblade Definitive Edition. Like, if they just straight up ported it over, I would be satisfied with that. Mm. Hmm. What else would I want? I mean, outside the obvious. Maybe a port of uh, Pokemon Conquest or a sequel? To it? Yeah. Oh, I could. I could see a Pokemon Conquest. Uh, I, I would actually prefer a sequel to Pokemon Conquest. Basically, give it a bunch of new mechanics. Uh, just complete, like, new 3D. Just build it from the, from the ground up. It's and, like, um... Go ahead. I was just gonna say, it's like, even though I don't really get into strategy games, I can appreciate wanting to give, like, a, a nice thrill spin-off like that another thing. Yeah. I am excited for um, the uh, Mario Rabbids 2, but at the, need to play. at the same time, I, what I would absolutely love, imagine if they made a Pokemon game with XCOM style battle system. You're sending your full, like, you, you choose four of your six party to send out in a battle at the start. And maybe you can, like, you do, like, you've got, uh, like, you can call them back and put in your two reserves. Maybe you've only got, like, a limited time you can do that. It's like, oh, you can only use your reserves, like, you know, once or twice. Something like that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, unfortunately, I am starting to get pretty tired. My meds are starting to kick in, and... Yeah. That's fine. Nice chatting with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait for the, for the game. Let's actually get started. Also, to collect the not triple triad cards. That'll be fun. And I think Bright Ops is in on this plan. Yes. Oh, well, turns out next week is called off due to brush fire. <laughs> what? Oh god, I hope you don't get another brush fire. It's... it's winter. Thank god. H how cold exactly are Australian winters? Um... Not that cold as compared to what you would experience. Like, I think an average of around maybe 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. And have you even seen snow outside no. of a video game? Nope. Well, I, I, then there's your answer. I would also say, though, Argo, it's like, okay, are you sure, though, there's not, like, some, uh, like, I don't know, a, a, a bug that breathes fire or something that lives in Australia that could do th do, do fire beetles live in Australia? I mean, it's Australia. You, you could say yes, and I would believe you. 
I could also believe that a forest fire would start if a kangaroo learned how to use magic. I can believe that. <laughs> but, uh, Bombardier Beater, that's what they're called. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that is actually a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh... Anyway, good night, y'all. Nah. A lot of them are US. Huh. What? I would think Australia, because it's Australia. <laughs> Australia? Okay, if US is living with normal difficulty, Australia and Africa is god mode. Okay, but here we go. Uh, this is something that you've probably heard of before. Uh, we've got basically uh, birds that will set uh, bushes on fire. I know! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Not not a, quite a literal phoenix, but close enough. God, like, yeah. man, even like a few minutes ago when I was thinking to jokingly say, oh yeah, what, what, what's something that might light on fire? I briefly thought, huh, what if I said that, oh, you sure a phoenix doesn't live in, in your area, area, but I'm like, you know what, no. A bird that lights things on fire is just too ridiculous. Okay, so I guess that's not how I get that, honey. Hmm. Can I visit this dude in the winter? Uh, just some dialogue. Yeah. Oh, oh, ooh, honey. Comb. So. Yee. And I might have to replay. I, I think I've said this a few times before. I have to replay Xenoblade Chronicles X. Because <laughs> I never it... really did any of the, uh, the end game stuff. I think I did a little bit, but I didn't wind up doing too much of it. Like, I didn't get the, you know, special skills and... Like, I, I think part of the issue is that you kind of had to get some stuff for doing, like, some of the online yeah. missions. And I remember, I think that's why I gave up, because I kept on getting, like, connection errors. Which happens, mm. unfortunately, and... Yeah. I still hated the fact that they changed the name for the international version for the uh the mechs. Because oh, in the Japanese they were called Yeah, in the Japanese version they were called dolls. Mm hmm And it's like I'm like scale scale doesn't make sense. Doll The idea of these big mechas being called dolls at least makes sense because it's like, oh they are constructs, they are dolls. I mean, the idea is that a skeleton is supposed to be short for, like, exoskeleton. Yeah. But that, that feels like a forced nickname. I mean, I, I, I think it works, but on the other hand, it makes me think, like, why are we calling these things, like, why would they be called skeletons would be, like, my first thought. Yeah. Like, just, just call them mechs. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, all I can think of whenever I think of them now is uh, every time you'd start piloting one, if you'd have to wait long enough, but then you'd get the, the vocals kick in. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, it, it could get a bit repetitive over, over time, but on the other hand, oh god. 
That was music to fly to. Very spirited. Yeah, that's kind of, that's the sort of thing you'd hope that, you know, if they ever redid it, they would include, like, a thing, an optional toggle to be like, eh, turn, turn off the background music for, for flight. And it's only just, what, a month or two until uh, Xenoblade 3 comes out. Mm -hmm. Which, like, it was fascinating to read the thing about how, like, oh yeah, they got that special limited edition, but apparently they they were kind of needing that extra time to get the that, like, fully done and out, so it's not going to be available at launch. <laughs> it's like, wow, they really did push the... The, the release date up. That, that feels like such a non-Nintendo move to do. It's like... even That must mean that Nintendo is confident that it is ready. And that the extra time was just for... Well, timing convenience for, like, sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like... Why... why would you put something early? That goes against what you do, Nintendo. Yeah. Like, I, I, I am hoping that it doesn't turn out Xenoblade 3 needs a big day one patch or whatever, because that would be unfortunate. I mean, like... The Xenoblade games have been pretty solid games that haven't really needed, uh... That sort of thing, like, I mean, okay, yeah, they've had, like, DLC and whatnot, and, okay. I wouldn't really say it's an improvement, but there is that whole thing about, um... The, the enemy NPC in Xenoblade 2 that would constantly say the same dialogue over and over again. Yeah. I might need to make completing the other Xenoblade stuff my pri my priority now. Like, for for a while, I decided to go ahead and play uh, Metroid Dread on hard mode because you know, I thought I'd go ahead and also try out the Dread mode, which is the one hit kill thing, which is interesting but also naturally frustrating because it's a one hit kill mode. <laughs> um, and it's like, man, I, you know. Almost if for nothing, no other reason than completion's sake and having full thoughts in mind when playing the next game. You know, I want to play their Golden Country of Torna and uh, the future's uh, connected thing. Yeah. I think one of the big things that sort of uh, stops me from wanting to replay Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is the gacha element. Which is ironic because that's something that should encourage replaying. It took me... It took me like two days of farming to get the last one, which was Cosmos. Yeah, she seems to be that. But then again, like, the... The idea, as I understand, is that, oh, you know, you're not supposed to try to go for com uh, completion, but I mean, that is what people are going to want to do, especially if you yes. want to get the rare blades. <laughs> Hello, by the way. Hello. I am killing bees. Oh, more like just avoiding them. That's all you really need to do. Ah. I'm just gonna run. 
Are they bees? They look more like yes. wasps. They're... They're bees. They're just not honeybees. Uh, I don't know, wasp. man. There's a lot of honey in here. Yeah, but like, okay, I should say they're not bumblebees. I think, yeah. Because it's like, if you if you have the bee form, when you're in a uh, bee form, they're like, oh, follow bee. You're bee. a fat one, aren't you? Yes. That's yeah. exactly what they say. Yeah, I, I saw him coming. Yeah. I saw, saw all they come in while well, the bee. You sure he doesn't have to what? kill them? Oh, no, I remember now. No, you need invincibility. Let them kill themselves against your golden feathers. Ah. Yay! Freak you, nature. Yeah. <laughs> I, because I remember, like, I thought this was the one where, like, yeah, you just had to dodge them and they eventually wear out, but that wasn't happening. Hmm. So I'm like, right, I had to go back into my memory. So this was the one where he would have been better off just pecking them to death. Nah. If you try pecking them, you're going to get killed. I mean, I was pecking That's... a bunch of them. Yeah, but they, uh... It's difficult because they come at you so much that, hmm. you know, you make a mistake. Fair enough. You're done. Hmm. Also, I shared an image in the general chat of one of Argyle's characters. Not one of my characters. It seems like one of your characters. The spirit <laughs> is there. Eh. If if he was maybe wearing a uh, if he was maybe wearing a pretty dress, then sure. I mean that's just a given. That's just a given. It's just it was just it's just very much the case of yep. You're a barbarian raised by unicorns with a crippling addiction to candy. Yep, I can see that. That's an Argyle character. Not really, but yeah. <laughs> uh... Really. <laughs> We've seen your characters, Argle. Yeah, most of them tend to be female. Yes. And and are you saying that the, that that the being cripplingly addicted to candy isn't a common no, that, trait? No, that is that is purely a ruby thing. But yeah, I, I can see I can see the spirit. Hmm. Yes, I'm just assuming that a dress will be produced at some point. <laughs> well, I guess it doesn't say that it's a male orc. <gasps> you know what, actually? Yeah, no. Oh, God. I... So you have this, you have this big, you know, burly female orc barbarian who has the personality of a lolly. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I look forward to them turning up in the campaign. Mm. <laughs> I am glad I could inspire. How you guys doing? Well, uh, playing and fortunately not being dead. That is a big ass caterpillar. Yes. Oh, that's a big ass bird. <laughs> and my, I just noticed my throat is actually getting kind of, uh. kind of getting sore now. I mean, I've been talking all day. Woke up at 9, uh, had a campaign session. Then watched wrestling and freaked out about some of the big, uh, amazing moments in those matches. You know you were into wrestling? Oh, yeah. Hmm. 
Like, are we talking professional wrestling or? Yeah, AEW, all elite wrestling. Ah. Oh. Never heard them. They're the major competitor to WWE at the moment. Never heard of them. But then again, I'm not, I'm not so big into the into the wrestling scene yeah. anymore. So I I even posted a video a couple of weeks ago about uh, it was like why wrestling is a like wrestling is a show about professional wrestling. It isn't real. I don't remember that video being linked. I'll link it again because it is. It is a fun video that really explains like why wrestling is so fun to get into because it's like you know it doesn't take itself seriously that's true i will admit i kind of i was re really into wwe back in the 1990s 1920 like 1990s 1920s and i just cut and I, like i've tried following like the games and all that recently but those re the recent games have been really bad yeah that probably hasn't helped damn they are giving me a heart attack but <laughs> yeah it's more the fact of uh, does mo it's mostly the various people involved is just most of them don't really capture the attention that some of the old school guys did yeah, that's that's where AEW is good. Um, like they've got some of the old school wrestlers in their roster, like uh, the Hardy Bros. Fair enough. I mean, they're like they're old now. They're they're past their peak, but they're still putting on good shows. Mm. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Undertaker recently retired. But yeah, that's... but I mean, he he was he was old. Oh yeah, he. It's kind of disappointing they didn't let him go out with the unbeatable at WrestleMania thing. Yeah, but I think I think they had to have him beaten as a good ex like they needed that excuse to finally uh, have him retire because it's like. You know, the whole story is that he's like this, um... Oh, that one. Oh. Yeah. His whole story is basically he's like this undead lich, whatever. Or, you so, know, a biker. Either or. That, that, that one... <laughs> yes. The, that, that was during the, the phase of the 90s where they're like, we don't want any of this supernatural bullshit. We're going to be serious. So, like, for, like, a year or two, he was a biker, and then they're like, Nah, we, we need the, the dumb supernatural bullshit. <laughs> but yeah, he... It really was a case of, like... Because, like, from what I understand, is the actual... Well, I'll just say The Undertaker. He was actually a very nice guy. Uh, he was one of those people that um, he would always put new talent over his own career, basically. He would never be like, oh, I want the title. I'm an, I, you know, I'm a, uh, you know, I've been in the company longer than you, so therefore I deserve the title. He would be like, no. Your new blood, you should have the title. Wrestle me, make I'll make you look good. He he was in it for the show. Yeah. Sorry, who? So, sorry, I miss, missed the who that was about. Sorry. The Undertaker. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, he his whole thing was always like, yes, basically letting the new blood. Uh sort of get their shine, their time in the spotlight. So, him losing 
as he's like last match. It it was a way of both him being like, okay, now now is I I need to retire, and like okay, I think it was to Brock Lesnar that he lost. Now Brock Lesnar wasn't exactly new blood, but he was um he's a crowd favorite and he, Brock Lesnar's whole shtick is that he's just this unbeatable machine mm. so it was the case of like yes I, I need to retire let let Brock Lesnar be the new unbeatable yeah, I recall, I'm possibly wrong here I think it was Brock Lesnar it was the idea that he was undefeated until the whole New World Daughter thing. Mm. Wasn't it? Or am I thinking... Uh, I think Brock Lesnar came in after that. Yeah. Can't quite remember. So I, I think... I think New World... Yeah, New World Older was just before I got into wrestling in the... Uh, mid to... Early to mid 2000s. Hmm. Cause... Yeah, I'm just trying to remember, because there was someone who... The, the thing was that they just... They were pretty much unbeatable for a long... For a very long time. Like, it was like 300 or something matches, and had won every one of them. And I think it was like one of the stipulations of New World... Of New World Order, one of the people there was, I want to be the guy. Because they had so much control over... At that point, W... CW or whatever it was called. They basically just said, "I want." One of them just said, "I want to be the one who beats him." Yeah. And basically, they just made that happen. Um. I do remember that's the that the way they justified it. In, they justified it was they used a, was the use of a cattle prod. Don't care how fat, how big and tough you are. This will take you down. Zap. Uh, looking at it, like Goldberg had a, a Gold, hundred and seventy-three. Yeah. I think it was Goldberg. Yeah, that's that rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah, Goldberg and Kevin Nash. And Olway has very little knowledge of what the hell we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> all all I'm he hearing is nerd, quiet. nerd, 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 nerd. Yeah, that's fair. Wait, wait, which I can appreciate. There, there's... As I had pointed out in that one video I linked in Degenerate Chat, there, there, there is something... Uh, if not sexy, appealing to hearing others nerd out about things that they like. <laughs> uh, so, so it's funny, right? Like, back in uh, high school, um, <clears throat> we had to do this like uh, essay. We had to like be like, hey, what? Like, pick a person that isn't in movies. Like, they're not an actor, and. Um, you know, sort of do an essay on why you think they would be a good actor or whatever. And this was before I realized how fake wrestling was. Where it's like all the wrestlers are, uh, they're very athletic freaking actors, basically. Because like, yes, those the, the stuff they do in the ring is real, but you know, it's, it's safe. But anyway. Safe-ish. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, it is very much the case of, yes, they're actors, yes, they're, you know, it, they've tried to make it as safe as possible, but at the same time, if you're go if you're getting hit by a chair, if you're doing that, if you do that wrong, that can be very bad. Like, okay, there's a good example of uh, The Undertaker. He broke Goldberg's neck and almost killed him because of, um... His 
his most famous move, the Tombstone Pile Driver, where you're literally turning someone upside down and then just dropping down, dropping them down onto their head. Um, it is a move that only a few wrestlers can do because uh, the person that's performing the move has to uh, make sure that <clears throat> their head is safely held between their legs so that way when they do the drop they're not actually dropping them on their head they drop them close enough but still keeping their head braced um and what i think happened was um i believe it was goldberg was I think it was a case of both Undertaker being way too exhausted to do it. Goldberg being a rather big guy. And I think it was also like... I think Goldberg might have set up for the wrong move, thinking it was a sit-down pile driver. Uh. So, yeah, he got his neck snapped. Shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so as I was saying, right, so we did this essay about, like, who would think would be, you know, a good actor, and I was like, Dave Bautista! Because he was my favourite wrestler at the time, and, like, I did the whole essay, and I remember people making fun of me, it's like, oh, wrestlers aren't actors, they can't act, ha ha ha, and then it's like, yeah, Dave Bautista is now, he's not exactly like an A-lister, but, you know, he's in, uh, frickin', um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, he's got a couple of other movies. Like, he's not the biggest name in, like, I mean, he is one of the Guardians, but... Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. I feel like considering that you basically just landed on that guy, you probably sh that should have been fatal to him. Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't an intentional, ca well, an intentional butt stuff, but it happened. Yeah. It's sort of like why I'm kind of sa sad that Dw that Dwayne Dwayne Johnson didn't, uh, yeah. yeah, Dwayne Johnson didn't actually make a run for presidency. Because <laughs> I remember he said that he was going to do it at some point, but he but he would have to put it off because he wasn't going to do it for the next one because of a prior obligation. I mean, come on. He makes more money as an actor than he would as a president. <laughs> that is true. It's more the fact that with Dwayne... Something that you notice when you actually look at his career and all that is he, tr no matter what he's doing, he strives to be good at it. Yeah. Like, he actively tries to be good at what, he's, at what he does. Yeah, like, his, his early career in movies was kind of... It kind of gave him that, like, a lot of people I remember talking to about it was like, yeah, he's kind of cool, but he's just going to be like a a B-list uh, actor. He's never going to make the same kind of uh, headlines as like, you know, um, uh, Schwarzenegger. And then, you know, 10 years later, or even 15 years later, he, he had a real breakthrough. And I think it may have been like, I would I'll have to have to look at his career again, but I think maybe it might have been um uh, the Fast and the Furious that kind of pushed him from B to A. Though that being said, he did have a couple of kind of shitty movies, but yeah. then everyone does. Like I don't think. Like, I'm pretty sure you could look at at any actor and you can just say, yeah, they were in this piece of shit. Like That's not the... necessary. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, it's like how there was the whole thing with how, um, uh... What's his name? <laughs> how are you defying gravity, Acorn? 
Ah, jeez. Why, why don't I remember his name? Um, ah, not the bees. Um. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicholas Cage? Yeah. Nicholas Cage! Yeah, like, I, I know he apparently did, like, a whole stint of shitty movies just because he, he really needed the money. Yeah, he, he bankrupted himself. <laughs> yeah. It's... Just, I, I remember seeing just the list of things he did in... He basically spent his money on that resulted in him in bankruptcy. <laughs> just, I'll have to share... I'll have to get it and share it at some point, but it's just nuts. I think my favourite Nicolas Cage movie is one that came out in the past few years. Uh, shit, I can't remember what it's called at the moment. But it's the Five Nights at Freddy's knockoff. I still need to find... That, like, that was one that actually looked kind of intriguing. Well, I think it's like Wally's Wonderworld or something. Yeah. Huh? The one? So... Sorry, that was... I thought that was a game or something. I didn't realize it was a movie. <laughs> I haven't got enough acorns yet. Get your own acorns, you fucking squirrel. That's it. It's, yeah, Willy, Willy's Wonderland. It is a great movie. Like, and the funny thing is, Nick Cage has no dialogue in the entire movie. Really? Really? Mm hmm mm hmm He does not have a speaking role, and yet he is the hero of the movie. It is brilliant. Like, is he just... Did, did, he, it just someone dub over him, or does he just say nothing? No, he says nothing. Maybe that... Maybe that's why he's so good in it. He just shut the, <laughs> he shut the fuck up. He's got a good look, me, but on the other hand, it's like, oh god, I could just imagine he's like, Yeah, if you want me to talk, that's gonna cost you another five thousand dollars. Maybe that is something that we could watch uh, in, in one of our anime nights. I just watched Willy's Wonderland. I will admit, something I was going to. I was going to offer as a potential movie suggestion. It's not animated. Would be the first one of the first or second scary movie. Yeah. The worm's right there. Why didn't you eat it? It's a stupid baby. <laughs> it has no sense of object permanence. As soon as he turned <laughs> around, it was no longer there, as far as he was concerned. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. So how long do you plan to go with this? I... Oh shit, yeah, I've kind of... I just, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll go for like another eight minutes. Make this a cool two and a half hours. Yeah. Shit, just realized how long you were going, I guess. Yeah. So you're on the side to join. Yeah, and... Oh, and I, do, I mean, I'll probably post a thing about this, but I do, I do plan to get on earlier uh, next week as well, since thankfully next week also has standard eight-hour shift. Yay! And then it's back Yay. to nine-hour mandatories afterwards. But at least for two weeks, I work a normal 40-hour work week. Well, I mean, next week I don't work a normal 40-hour work week because i got to work on Saturday, but still... Yeah. It it is kind of sucky that, well, very sucky. The idea of yeah, you're getting mandatory overtime. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> yeah, having the extra money is nice, but it's like mm, it would be nice to be able to actually rest and do things that are not work. <laughs> I would like to be able to use this money for something <laughs> that isn't you know keeping me alive. <laughs> just remember, if the bird falls asleep, just butt, just butt stomp its head and snap its neck. Saves you having to get. Saves you having to deal with the whole pro problem. 
Yeah, I've already fulfilled uh, my animal cruelty quota with Gobi, I think. <laughs> the fuck's a Gobi? A camel. Camel. Uh, Bet you got a butt stomp to get it to spit on a plant. Oh, that camel. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. I think I find it disturbing the fact that the acorns have eyes and apparently are really sad that you're taking them and giving them to a squirrel. Just, there, there, there is no, there is no peace in this world. It doesn't matter if you're a vegan; everything suffers. This is what happens in worlds where everything has eyes. Jeez. All right. Yeah. How many goddamn acorns do you need, you cheap bastard? More shiny is up Let's hop here. No, no, I'm dead! Nab it! At least I managed to mitigate the damage. Well done. Yeah. I also rest. I haven't died in a long time, and I feel good about that. I got good! Yay. It's always a wonderful moment when you realize that, that moment of realization. I don't suck anymore! <laughs> It's like, man, it, it's, it's such a difficult game, but it feels so good when you manage to grasp its mechanics. Like, is is, is Banjo Kazooie the Dark Souls of Collectathons? Maybe try the maybe try the beehive. Uh, Might be something in there. I think I've been in there in this season, but you know it's worth checking out. No, like I remember that you were in spring when you looted the fuckers. I think it was fall. I think spring. I just saw them. And... Yeah, let's take a look around. No. Yeah, it was worth. Worth a look. Yeah. Just the one solitary bee wandering around, not doing anything. Because he doesn't want to mess with the invincible bear. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess all the honey's mine now. Huh. Well, screw going after my sister, I'm pretty happy right here. I mean, though, to be fair, they... The, the honey is what for meant to be for the, uh... To raise the young larvae. Mm-hmm. Pupae. I think also, they get, don't they need it for surviving the winter? Or like, does the cold just completely knock them out? Yes. That is the answer to that. Yes. Yeah, fucking nature. Although, How does that or, work? Or yeah. probably the better way is it depends on the hive. It depends on the hive. It depends on what type of bee or wasp or whatever you're dealing with. Because I remember there's at least one type of wasp that basically just... I think it's a wasp that just basically their plan for winter is literally die. <laughs> Guess I'll just die! <laughs> no. Yeah, they basically... They set... They just set themselves up for the... Per, up for the, so the next hop for the hive and the young will, like, wake up or something next when... Spring comes around, but the actual adults of the time will just freeze to death. Yeah, for, one thing I have learned about wasps in, over the years is wasps do everything by extremes. There is no middle ground. Nope. Wait, what's that on the bird? No, oh, that's a lion. It's a beehive. So now I'm looking for acorns, but you know, I think I'll just... I think I'll take a poke into winter for a bit, but okay, you know, it's getting late now. Alright, what I'll do... 
is I'm going to set myself up in front of the winter door, and that's where I will continue for next time. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. I mean, I think you've pretty much looked all over the place in autumn. I mean, There's no more, acorn, no more acorns here than that's a problem. I mean, I would not be surprised if there's just some small corner I haven't yet looked in, but we'll, we'll, we should Oh, see. of course. Of course there's one somewhere. But there always is one somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, fuck you. Fuck you. And... Fuck your offspring. Why, yeah, is, especially. why is the ice alive and, hate, and it hates you? Elemental <laughs> it's my it's my theory that a lot of the stuff that is alive within uh, Banjo Kazooie is probably animated by Gruntilda. Makes sense. Possibly. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Thank you for hanging out, dudes. No problem. Mm -hmm. And a good day to whoever watches this later. Yep, yep. Indeed.